Hi there, I'm Sam and I'm a Linode Advocate. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install TensorFlow on Ubuntu 20.04. So let's just get straight into it. Before we get started, there's going to be a few things you'll need to do. First, you'll need to familiarize yourself with our getting started with Linode guide and complete the steps for setting your Linode's host name and time zone. There'll be a link for this in the description below. This guide uses sudo wherever possible. Complete the sections of our how to secure your server guide to create a standard user account. Harden SSH access and remove unnecessary network services. Do not follow the configure a firewall section yet. This guide includes firewall rules specifically for an open VPN server. You'll also need to update your system by running this command here. In terms of system requirements, you'll need a robust and stable hosting environment with at least 4GB of memory such as a Linode 4GB plan. If you're using Ubuntu, TensorFlow requires version 16.04 or later. There's also a few prerequisites that you'll also need to be aware of before starting. You'll need Python 3.8 or higher and its required libraries. You'll also need a Python virtual environment to run TensorFlow inside of that virtual environment. And finally, you'll need the latest version of PIP version 19 or higher. Okay, what we want to do is we want to open a new terminal window to get started. First, we need to check our system's current version of Python. We can do so by typing Python 3 dash dash version. As confirmed, we have Python 3.8.9, so we know that Python's installed. Next, we'll need to install PIP if we don't have it already. We can do this by running sudo apt install python3 pip. I should also mention if you're using a Mac instead of Ubuntu, then you may need to use the brew command instead of apt. This, of course, also requires you to have brew installed on your machine for this to work. If you're on Ubuntu, however, you can just ignore that last line I've just said. Next, we need to install our Python virtual environment. If you've already got Python installed, you need to upgrade apt and install the Python virtual environment and its required packages. Because I'm on a Mac, I'm not going to be using apt. I'm going to be using brew instead, so keep that in mind. So in my case, I need to run brew install python3-dev python3-pip python3-venv. After we've installed those, we need to confirm both our versions of Python and PIP. So let's do Python 3 dash dash version. So that's all good. Then we're going to do PIP 3 dash dash version. It's confirmed that we have PIP version 20. Okay, let's actually get into creating our virtual environment for Python now. First, I'm going to cd to my desktop. Then I'm going to make a directory dedicated for this. So we're going to do make dr tensorflow dash dev. Then we're going to cd into that folder that we've just created. From there, we're going to create the virtual environment using the following command, python3 dash m v e n v dash dash system dash site dash packages dot slash v e n v. What that command just did is create a directory named v e n v which contains the supporting Python files. You can actually choose any name you want for the virtual environment in place of dot forward slash v n v. Next, we'll need to activate our virtual environment by running source dot forward slash v n v forward slash bin forward slash activate. If you can see this similar to what I have with v n v in brackets before your computer's name, that means you've successfully activated your Python virtual environment. So now that we've gotten this far, we need to upgrade PIP just to make sure. So let's do PIP install dash dash upgrade PIP. We've successfully installed PIP version 21, which is what is required for TensorFlow. Okay, so now that our virtual environment is running, it's time to install TensorFlow. While we're in our virtual environment, we can run PIP install dash dash upgrade TensorFlow. After we've installed TensorFlow, we need to list the Python packages with the following command to confirm TensorFlow is actually in. So let's do PIP list GREP TensorFlow. We can confirm that TensorFlow is installed based on this. 
What we can do is verify the TensorFlow installation by running this command, python-c import tensorflow as tf semicolon print bracket tf dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore bracket. As you can see, I've got version 2.7.0, so we know that's verified. Before we sum things up, I just want to go over one more thing that could come in handy for you if you're doing this yourself. I've put this command in here, and if you notice, if we go back a bit, there'll be this tf underscore cpp underscore min underscore log underscore level. See this numeric value here. Now, what does that mean? In this case, number three will mean info warning and error messages are not printed. If we do zero, it, it means all the messages will be logged, which is default behavior. If we do one, info messages are not printed. And if we do two, info and warning messages are not printed. So this might come in handy for you if you're trying to debug something, for example. So if we want to deactivate the virtual environment and switch back to the original non-virtual shell, all we need to do is simply run the command deactivate. Now what we can do is if we ever want to run this again and go back into the virtual environment, all we just simply need to do is type source dot forward slash vnv uh, slash fin slash activate. Okay, so you've learned how to install TensorFlow on a Python virtual environment. If you're looking for some guides or articles for further reference, I'll include a few in the description below. Some of them include TensorFlow tutorials, both for beginners and experts. There's also some essential TensorFlow documentation you can read, also a bunch of modules and functions you might find handy with TensorFlow, as well as an introduction to machine learning and tools that can support your TensorFlow workflows. I hope you guys found today's video really useful. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.